Hello everybody. Welcome to today's video. Today we are going to know how few of our home appliances function. Come let's get into the video. Firstly let us learn about doorbells. The doorbell simplicity makes it such a marvel. These little devices put the scientific principle of electromagnetism into action. In a useful and tuneful way. The heart of a doorbell is an electromagnet. When you press a doorbell button, you complete an electrical circuit that allows household electricity to flow through the doorbell's internal electromagnet. The magnetic field generated by the electromagnet is then used to power a mechanism that creates the doorbell sound. The doorbell requires less energy to operate. An important part of the doorbell is the transformer. The transformer converts regular household current to the lower voltage. A simple chime doorbell uses the magnetic field created by the electromagnet to move a magnetic piston to strike two tone bars. This makes the ding dong sound. The next one is ceiling fan. The first ceiling fans appeared in early 1860s. The motor in the ceiling fan is the electric machine that converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. The ceiling fan capacitor torques up the electric motor, allowing it to start and run. An electrical current reaches the motor and then enters coils of wire that are wrapped around a metal base. As this current passes through the wire, a magnetic field is caused that expends force in a clockwise motion. That actually changes the electric energy into mechanical energy. This action causes the motor coils to spin. As the coils are spinning, the fan captures this spinning motion, transferring it to the fan blades. A gas stove burner consists of a burner assembly attached to a small gas valve that is connected to the main gas line. When you turn the knob, the intake valve opens and gas flows through a Venturi tube. A wide pipe that narrows in the middle. Gas enters through one of the wide ends, and as it passes into the narrowed section, its pressure increases. There is a small air hole in the section where the pipe widens again, and as the gas moves into this section, the pressure releases, sucking oxygen into the air hole. The oxygen mixes with the gas, making it combustible. The oxygen gas mixture then flows into the burner. The burner is simply a hollow metal disc with holes punctured through its perimeter. A gas pilot light or electric pilot sits to one side of the burner and sends a small flame or spark to ignite the oxygen gas mixture as it flows through the holes in the burner. By turning the knob to a higher heat setting, you increase the flow of gas and air, and the flame gets larger. The main components of the refrigerator are compressor, responsible for circulation of refrigerant throughout the system. Condenser, located on the back outside wall of the refrigerator and helps to release the heat absorbed from inside the refrigerator out into the surrounding air. Evaporator, housed on the inside of the refrigerator and absorbs the heat contained within it, effectively reducing the interior temperature. Expansion device liquid refrigerant is carried through a capillary tube which works as an expansion device as it cools the gas, turning it back into a liquid. Thermostat, the thermostat regulates the temperature inside the refrigerator, engaging the cooling cycle as needed. Once the temperature inside the refrigerator rises above the set point sensors alert the compressor to engage, and the cooling cycle begins. The unit draws in the cold liquid refrigerant, pressurizes and condenses it. And raises the temperature, turning it into a gas. The compressor pushes the hot gas towards the condenser coils on the exterior of the refrigerator where it comes in contact with the lower air temperature in the room and reverts back to a liquid state. The cooled liquid continues on its journey towards the evaporator, traveling through the coils on the inside of the refrigerator and freezer compartment. The refrigerant absorbs the heated air from inside the refrigerator, lowering the temperature back to the desired set point. The refrigerant evaporates, turns back into a gas, and returns to the compressor to continue the cycle. Inside the strong metal box, there is a microwave generator called a magnetron. When you start cooking, the magnetron takes electricity from the power outlet and converts it into high-powered, radio waves. The magnetron blasts these waves into the food compartment through a channel called a waveguide. The food sits on a turntable, spinning slowly round so the microwaves cook it evenly. 
The microwaves bounce back and forth off the reflective metal walls of the food compartment. Just like light bounces off a mirror. When the microwaves reach the food itself, they don't simply bounce off. Just as radio waves can pass straight through the walls of your house. So microwaves penetrate inside the food. As they travel through it, they make the molecules inside it vibrate more quickly. Vibrating molecules have heat so, the faster the molecules vibrate, the hotter the food becomes. Thus the microwaves pass their energy onto the molecules in the food, rapidly heating it up. There's a fixed outer drum and a rotating inner drum with small holes around its edge. The drums are mounted on a horizontal axis. The outer drum is held to the frame of the machine by heavy-duty springs. That's because, when the clothes spin, they can make the drum shake violently. The springs help to absorb the vibrations. Hot and cold water enter through the detergent tray at the top. The inner drum turns back and forth. The plastic paddles on the inside help to slosh the clothes through the detergent and water held by the outer drum. An electric motor turns the inner drum, typically using a long rubber belt, yellow. A heating element heats the water as necessary. When the wash cycle is finished, the pump sucks the water away. The water empties down a tube to the drain. With this we come to the end of today's video. Hope the video was informative and helped you learn something new today. Do support DRM Engineering and subscribe to the channel. We'll meet you in the next video soon.